right, so let's dive into, we're gonna, we're gonna split this up into different categories. All right, so we're gonna go over the different velocity banking options in terms of how you can use velocity banking. And I laid them right here. I think this is pretty obvious. So velocity banking can be used to pay off debt, specifically say bad debt or any debt for that matter. Velocity banking can be used to pay off debt. Velocity banking can be used to leverage debt. So leverage can be a scary word sometimes. Leveraging involves risk. You can lose money, you can make money. So there is a risk. These levels down, risk. Paying off debt provides a guarantee. If I pay it off, I never have to worry about it ever again. If I leverage debt, that means I'm not trying to actually pay off the debt fast. What I'm trying to do is turn that debt into a income producing asset, one option. So if I'm looking to leverage a debt, that means that I want it to make me money in the long run. Typically that's real estate, could be um, some form of business like lending, okay? Um, let's see what else. It could also be things like, um, in terms of if you have a business, like if you have a vehicle, you could leverage the debt of the vehicle, the interest you pay, the gas, the maintenance, the payment, the insurance. A lot of that could be written off if you have a business. If you do not, that car is a liability. We most likely want to get rid of it because the gain is that you get the cash flow. You no longer have to worry about the debt. Okay. So velocity banking can be used to pay off debt, can be used to leverage debt. Velocity bank can be used to invest. This is also risky, er, I would say. So meaning there are uh, uh, people, and I've, I've done this, I've played with this a little bit, okay, not too crazy. But uh, for example, I could take a 0% credit card. Let's say it's uh, 15 months on purchases, right? And then the balance transfer. Let's say there's a 0% fee on balance transfers and 0% on the transfer, the, the actual amount that we're using, okay? So let's say you have a $25,000 credit limit on this credit card. Let's say it's a business credit card. Maybe it's a personal. Could be either or. And typically, I would like to see an individual that's going to leverage debt to invest. I like to see good financials. You got good solid income. Your expenses are less than what you bring in, right? You have minimal debt, not a whole lot of um, bad debt, not a whole lot of consumer debt, and you got plenty of cash flow to work with. You've got an emergency account, okay? You've got reserves, you've got good credit. I like to see good financials if we're gonna leverage debt. This lets me know that person is disciplined. If I see 2000 a month, 1900 they spend, they cash flow a hundred bucks and they're going to try and leverage debt. And they've got a, you know, 57 grand of credit card debt, personal loans, student loans, a car loan. Eh, you know, I'm not too excited about this. Right. But, if we add a couple zeros to the equation, you know, let's say they're, I don't know, they spend, move the commas over, right? They're making 20 to, to 35K a month, right? Or more, and they're spending 
10 grand right a month so they got plenty of cash flow to work with or even if they're spending 19 grand they still got a good uh what is it they're making like say 25 to 35k good six to ten thousand plus in cash flow there's a lot to work with but i like to see good financials that's the only uh, uh main point i want to make this evening is having good 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 financials so let me Clear this up, all right? So let's say you're someone that's got good finances. You got your numbers in line. You know what you're doing. You know what your goals are. Let's say you're a huge enthusiast. You've studied a ton. Maybe you're even planning on getting a, a career in blockchain, okay? In the cryptocurrency market. Let's say that's your burning desire. You want to do this, okay? And maybe you don't have a whole lot of capital to work with, or maybe you have, say, 10 grand. Maybe we could leverage some of that credit that you have, combine, put it into, put it into some trades if you're knowledgeable in that. Or... Could we buy real estate? Is that an option? Could we buy real estate? Could we start a business? So what is this, what, what is the benefit of, of me doing this? Um, number one, I cut time down. The amount of time that it's gonna take me to save up the money to then go invest I get to shrink that time by leveraging zero cost debt. That's the whole purpose. If I'm gonna leverage debt, I want it to cost me nothing or I'm able to offset my cost, right? I've got a client that has multiple credit cards and what he'll do is he'll take multiple balance transfers out of multiple business credit cards and he does that Burr method that buy what is it buy rehab refinance repeat strategy that Burr strategy if you've never heard of it just type that in b-r-r-r-r -R 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 strategy and you'll find some good information so i got a client that does that he does not have the capital to take his cash to go buy real estate. So he spends his time building personal and business credit, establishes a business, gets access to cheap money, cheap debt, zero cost debt, and then acquires an income producing asset that then pays off the debt that he leveraged. Once he pays it off, he'll rinse and repeat. Use the same debt to acquire another income producing asset. So what ends up happening is that person time-wise goes a lot faster than somebody that spends their time just saving up their money and then coming to realize, ah, oh, crap, I need credit regardless if I wanna buy some real estate, All right? So there's, there's um, a lot to be said here in terms of the different ways that we can uh, use velocity banking. But these are, I think these are the most popular ones. Maybe there's something that I'm missing here. Go ahead and comment if I'm missing something. But paying off debt is pretty straightforward. The objective, if I'm going to pay off debt, using velocity banking the objective is to use debt snowball as your measuring stick you cannot just say i'm going to do velocity banking because i saw some 25 year old kid talking about oh you know take a line of credit and boom 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 chunk here chunk there no we need to use debt snowball as our measuring stick what does that mean denzel Here's what it means. If I'm in the mindset 
of I want to be debt free. So that means we're going to exclude leveraging, we're going to exclude investing, exclude this offsetting costs and flipping, flopping, finessing and, you know, churning and all that stuff. If the mindset is I want to be debt free, I don't want to be bothered, leave me alone, I don't want to ever use debt, I want to avoid debt like the plague, okay. Velocity banking, debt snowball is your measuring stick. What do we have to do? Let's say uh, somebody is, let's do a little smaller number here. Let's say, uh, let's say you're cash flowing a thousand bucks a month. Okay, you're making uh, 4,500 a month. You spend 3,500 a month and you got 200 grand of debt. Okay, you got a mix of cars, student loan, a, a mortgage maybe, um, personal loans, credit cards, whatever it is. You take this thousand, you map out all your debts from smallest to highest, okay? Smallest balance to highest of the 200K or however much debt you have. You go in order, okay? So let's say you've got one credit card, 3K, another one you owe seven, another one you owe 10, then you got a $20,000 car, okay? And then you got a $50,000 student loan. That snowball, you start with your lowest debt, right? Whatever the monthly payment is, okay? Let's say these are your payments. You take that 50 bucks, your thousand, apply it towards the smallest debt. How long is it going to take you to pay off 3,000? Less than three months, okay? Then you jump. Now you got 1,050 cash flow. You go to the next, and then you go to the next, you go to the next, and you want to map out the timeline of how long is it going to take me to wipe out 200,000 with the amount of income that I have. Let's just say it's going to take us seven years. Let's just say. What are some ways that I can go faster? Please comment. If we're just doing debt snowball, what are some ways that I can go faster? Well, number one, I can reduce expenses. That would be smart, right? I can reduce expenses. I could try to work more hours, okay? Um, maybe I can change where I shop. If I go to Whole Foods, should I start going to maybe Publix? A little bit cheaper or if I shop at Publix should I go to Walmart okay a little bit cheap so really thinking on being very conscious of where every dollar goes yes so let's say you did that and maybe we're able to cut it down to six years right without really doing much in terms of not getting a second job or anything like that although you could could get a side hustle that's another way to speed up debt uh, your, your debt free timeline right that's cool and then you you get your timeline so let's say seven years was just based off the current numbers now what velocity banking when we measure velocity banking we have our, our timeline in order for velocity banking to even make sense we have to go faster than seven years based on the current numbers, not anything additional. Because anything additional outside of the numbers, you could do with both concepts, right? So if I'm doing velocity banking, I can also work more hours. If I'm doing velocity banking, I can also reduce my expenses. I can shop at different places. I can sign up to different memberships, get rewards, coupon, uh, you know, what is it? What's that thing called? Couponing. Um, group group on I can do all these things to save money reduce expenses increase cash flow increase income get a side hustle so take out all the outside stuff that we could do to improve the numbers just work with the current numbers your current income current expense current cash flow let's say it gets us debt free in seven years with that snowball let's just say that's the case velocity banking needs to do it in like 
five years, you know, maybe four. It needs to go significantly faster, right? If, if your timeline is 6.75 years, so let's say Death Snowball 7, Velocity Banking 6.75, not a big difference, couple months. So is it worth it? Maybe, I mean, it is 0.25 faster, but with Velocity Banking, you could have maybe run the numbers incorrectly or your credit is not good enough for the tools needed to enhance the numbers to make them better. What if Velocity Banking showed 7.5 years? Well, am I going to do Velocity Banking? No, right? Is as fun as and exciting as it is, why would you, why would you go longer? You, you go with what is faster. There are cases where Velocity Banking will make no sense because that snowball was our measuring stick. Okay, so I want to make that very clear. If we're just focusing on paying off debt, which on this channel is usually that vibe. Most people want to get rid of their bad debt, consumer debt. They need to position themselves a little bit better, read a couple more books before they start trying to be the next, you know, uh, crypto millionaire or real estate investor. Everybody's a real estate investor now. Everybody's a crypto expert. Everybody's an expert. It's like, what's going on? Someone's got to be wrong, right? Somebody's got to be broke amongst all these so-called investors and crypto millionaires and blockchain experts and finance gurus. Somebody's got to be broke, right? Out of the whole crowd. Am I, am I on the right path here? So we got to really think when we're looking at information. We gotta really think it through, run the numbers. If you, if you spend 60 minutes a week to run your numbers, it will change your life. Regardless of what concept you choose, it will change your whole entire life. 60 minutes, that's it. That's all I ask. 60 minutes a week, do a review on your numbers. Every time you get a paycheck, do a review. 60 minutes. It's not, it's not long. Anyone can do that. I don't care how busy you are. I don't care how many hours you work a week. 60 minutes. A week, 60 minutes bi-weekly. You'll, ch trust me, you'll change your life. If I'm just paying off debt, debt snowballs my measuring stick, seven years. If velocity banking, the numbers come out higher, it means one of two things. Either you ran the numbers incorrectly um, or the tools that you acquired were, were not effective. For example, if you applied for a personal line of credit for 10K and you got a 16% rate, but all of your debts are less than 16%, it's not going to make sense. Okay. So the interest rate that you're using to leverage to pay off debt fast needs to be relatively close to what your interest rates are on your current debt or less. If it's less, it's almost a no brainer. It's kind of like debt consolidation, right? Most people understand debt consolidation, right? If I have a debt, let's say I got a, a loan with Lending Club for 15 grand and they're charging me 8% and I can get a PLOC at 10K at a 7% rating, it would make sense to reallocate what I owe of this 15 and put it into the PLOC and get charged 7%. That's debt consolidation. Where Velocity Banking comes in is simply taking all this income and dumping it into the line of credit and using it just like a checking account, right? 
where you can, where it's revolving, money goes in, money comes out, it speeds up the process because the way that 7% gets charged is on a daily rating. So if I dump 45 in the 10K, I'm getting charged 7% on say 5,000 as opposed to 10,000 for a certain amount of days and it keeps getting lower and lower, right? And then if you wanna get more slick, you add a credit card into the equation, 0% on purchases, run your bills, your, your, your consistent bills, your annual bills on a credit card, bills that can be paid with a credit card. You get one to 3% in cash back rewards. You don't have to worry about the bill for 15 months. You pay the monthly minimum payment. Uh-oh, I'm increasing your cash flow without actually reducing expenses. It, it was money you were gonna spend anyways, we just kind of pushed it out which gives us time to recapture that 18%. Shift it to the seven, what ends up happening? I pay zero costs. I offset my costs to pay off debt, which goes faster than just using my worthless piece of dollars, right? My worthless fiat currency I'm able to go a lot faster because I'm using banking products to my advantage as opposed to banking products being used against me, right? So here are the ways of doing velocity banking. I want to talk about how it's taught, how velocity banking gets taught, okay? So you have and let me tell you how I originally got exposed to velocity banking. It was from real estate investors, okay? From real estate investors. So really, velocity banking is, is, is a marketing term, right? It's, it's a hype word. It, it's just a way of accelerating and leveraging debt. That's it. Accelerating and or leveraging debt. Velocity banking is just a pretty term. It's hype, it's marketing, right? You'll, you'll see me use that title often because that's what people search. They hear it. So I learned it from real estate investors about velocity banking originally. So the way they were teaching it was to pay off debt and to buy real estate. So it was either pay off debt, because typically the people that were coming into this real estate community had some debt they need to get rid of so they can build some capital so that they can go buy real estate, right? And then some people will show you how to pay off that real estate really fast. Some real estate investors say, no, we don't want to pay off that real estate. Let it be. Let, it, let the debt stay there. We just cash flow. We're only interested in cash flow. So there's two different ways of looking at it. You'll have some real estate investors that will pay off the properties completely. And then it'll just cash flow 100%, which is nice. Low risk, tons of sitting debt equity, right? Then you've got individuals that will use real estate, uh, will do velocity banking to buy real estate, but they will not pay off the debt. They're just interested in cash flow, not really net worth, cash flow. So that's um, one environment. Real estate investors, how they typically teach it. Um, then you've got people that will, and then I guess this should, this should intertwine with um, how they teach it and then who's teaching it, okay? So when it comes to real estate investors, let's, let me put the players over here, right? So I personally really like the VIP channel, okay? So if you type in VIP, no. 
What's the name of their channel? Y'all help me out. It's Matthew Pillmore. It's VIP Financial. I don't know why I forgot that. Type in VIP Financial. Th this is where he dwells. Real estate investor, leveraging debt, leveraging credit, velocity banking. He'll throw in infinite banking. He's really big on, on leverage, credit leveraging. So VIP Financial. Another channel I like, Quack Brothers. Okay. Quack Brothers, they're nice. I like how they, those, these are the two biggest players that I know of that they're real estate investors. So they make a bulk of their money, I would say, in real estate, based on kind of like the material that I've watched. But I could be wrong, because I know with, with VIP and Matthew, he's got coaching services, so I'm pretty sure he's rocking and rolling in that department. But I'm pretty sure his real estate is probably his number one performing asset, because it, it doesn't require any additional work, as opposed to coaching. You got to keep doing it. Right? But he's got a whole team, phenomenal guy. Now, I'm going to put myself in this spot of how Velocity Banking gets taught. So this is depending on the environment of who we're talking to. So for the most part, on my channel, the people that are typically hitting my channel are right they're in this mindset. They're not necessarily in business mindset. Not everyone. I want to say a bulk of my audience are right here. They're, they're coming off of the Dave Ramsey wagon. Okay. They're realizing, oh crap, this is taking a long time. Oh no, I'm going to be here all day eating rice and beans. Oh no. Okay. So I'm, I'm dealing with people that are at a breaking point where what they know about money is just no longer working, right? So I'm dealing with, I got people that are, say, uh, coming from Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman. They, they never used debt before, not too big on building personal credit or their personal credit's really no good. And they're about to hit a breaking point They've been doing the snowball and the avalanche for four or five years. And now they're, you know, they started when they were 43. Now they're 52 and they're still in debt, you know, or they're 40. Now they're 50. They're 50. Now they're 55. And they're like, wait a minute, I'm getting older and my money keeps depreciating, but my debt keeps it, it, it's not going down as fast as I need it to. So they're about to hit that breaking point. Bam. They break. Oh, they find me. And so they're, they're not even thinking about investing in real estate. They're not thinking 10x my income. They're not thinking start a business, sell a product, become a content creator, an influence. They're not even in that mindset yet. And that's okay. I know I wasn't when I first started. So when I got presented the concept, I said, well, I'm not even ready to be a real estate investor. I don't even know how to run a business. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to, how to find a property. So uh, I was like, can I just use it to pay off debt? So here's where I, I will put myself in this category of just say paying off debt. And these people are typically, we'll call them financial consultants, financial consultants, maybe coaches. So you'll see <clears throat> quite a few people. I'm, I'm putting myself in here. Okay. So shout out to Mike Adams. Mike Adams is a well, his channel is called Think Wealthy. That's the name of it. His name is Mike Adams. The name of his YouTube channel is Think Wealthy with Mike, I believe. Let me look it up real quick. Think Wealthy 
with Mike Adams. Yep. So if you land on his channel, he'll throw in investing, he'll throw in real estate, he'll throw in a little infinite banking, but for the most part, he's showing people how to start with the concept. Same with me. Okay. Then Zell, your one and only finance geek. Typically my videos are how to start, compare, what do I need? What are my numbers? What credit score do I need? How do I get a line of credit? What's a HELOC? What's a PLOC? What's a, what's a, how do I get a 0% credit card? What are the best 0% credit cards? What are the best credit unions? Da -da 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 -da. Like all of the starter stuff, fundamentals, rules, what to do, what not to do, okay? Typically those people are coaches, financial coaches, consultants, maybe a financial advisor, or they're just like an enthusiast. They're, they're, they're just maybe a serial entrepreneur and they just so happen to you know, swing real estate or swing velocity banking into their, into their channel, right? So typically when you talk to someone like this, they're more so gonna say, okay, well, before we invest in real estate, how about we pay off that car? How about we get our credit? How about we wipe out all this bad credit card debt that you're paying 20 plus percent interest on? How about we get rid of that lending club loan? How about we get rid of that, you know, terrible student loan that's charging you astronomical rates? You know, how about we consolidate over here? How about we move some things around? How about we get the debt tools that we need? You get what I'm saying? So paying off debt. Now, there's some different variations on how we pay off this debt, okay? Different variations now. You got, I wanna say between Mike Adams and myself, pretty much in alignment with how we teach. But then you've got is replace your mortgage, okay? Now, there's different variations of velocity banking. The way that I typically do it is how I mentioned, how I explained it earlier. I use debt snowball as my measuring stick to see whether or not the concept makes sense. And I also adopt the same snowball strategy where I typically will tackle your smaller debts, work my way up. To the bigger debts typically so um, one way is I will meet the client where they're at I start small right and then work my way up start small work my way up along the lines I'm trying to get wins because remember you got to understand the type of people that I'm dealing with on a consistent basis. It's somebody that's about to hit that breaking point. They're like, all right, I surrender. This, 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 what I'm doing before is not working for me. I gotta try something different, but Denzel, I am lost. So can you help me understand this stuff? And I say, yes, I can. Watch my videos, join my course. Here you go. Let's do some one-on-one -on -one consulting, not coaching, one-on-one -on -one consulting strategy. Write the numbers out. Here you go. Step one, step two, step three, all the way to step 10. Here's what the next six to 12 months look like. Okay, once we do that, bump, bump, bump. Strategy, not coaching. Strategy, right? Straight numbers. Start small with the client, try to work up, work my way up, gain some wins. That's one way of looking at it. Now, for my smarter clients, or I should say better positioned clients that I will typically get that got higher incomes going on, is we will go after cash flow, right? Rather than interest savings. Okay? So we'll go after cash flow rather than interest savings, for example. Let's say we got a lending club loan at 5%, right? 
you owe 10,000. You got a credit card that you owe 6,000 monthly payment, 60 bucks. This payment, $646.82. The interest rate on this credit card, let's say is 19.99%. Uh, okay? So there might be a case this doesn't happen all the time. So lower balance, right? So one way I start small with velocity banking, I work my way up. So I could adopt velocity uh, I could adopt debt snowball methods here, start with the lower debt, work my way up. But in some cases, if I'm dealing with a client that's well positioned, what do I mean by that? They've got good income, let's say they're making 10 grand a month, a cash flow in like 3K. They got like 300K of debt. Their credit score is like an 800. I might want to hold off on paying this off, skip over and jump to this, the lending club. So it's a higher balance, 10,000, but look at the cash flow, 646. So when you do the math, sometimes, and this is where debt avalanche can sometimes beat debt snowball. Debt avalanche goes after highest debt or sometimes higher interest rate because you're saving more interest. Whereas over here on Velocity Banking, we're taking a different approach. We're going after cash flow most of the time. Do you see the different variations? Start small, work your way up, gain, gain wins and then you get better at the concept. You might be somebody that is well-versed. You spent a long time watching the videos, really understanding your position really well financially. Okay, maybe we go after cash flow because maybe we have a different strategy with your other debts. Maybe I could get a 0% credit card and transfer that 6K to zero and then focus on the lending club, wipe that out. Uh-oh. See how we can start making some finesse moves here and getting a little slick? That can happen. That can happen. Okay? So these are like the two main variations that I'll, I'll take, that approach. Is I start small, work my way up, try to get wins, early wins, build momentum, because I, I have to understand who I'm working with. Or well positioned, I go after cash flow over interest savings most of the time when they're well positioned. That's that's like a certain variation. Another one in regards to replace your mortgage right here, what they will sometimes more focus on is the client that has a $300,000, say, mortgage, right? So let's say you got a $300,000 mortgage. What they'll teach you to do is to convert, replace, to a HELOC, right, in the first position. So let's say you got a $300,000 mortgage, but you also have $50,000 in student loans. You also have 10 credit card debts. You also have two car loans. Okay, here's where I would disagree with this strategy because we're overlooking a lot of cash flow, a lot of early wins, they're going after interest savings more, more likely, and they're going after the biggest monster. Now, oftentimes, psychologically, this may not work for everyone. It could work for some, not gonna say it won't work. It could work for some. I would say not for all, especially my uh, type of clientele that I work with, it, it might be a little hard to understand. Why would I skip over all these loans, replace my $300,000 mortgage with a first position HELOC? The strategy typically is they'll give you 
this HELOC at a matched rate of the mortgage, if not less. And I would say in this current environment, mortgage rates being so low, it's a bit hard to compete with the first position HELOC if you're going to start like this. So it's a little bit difficult. I don't know how, I don't know how that's working right now, 2021, right? And also the fact that there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, HELOCs readily available in the marketplace. There's a lot of banks that are not doing HELOCs, not doing PLOCs, things like that. But let's say it did work. You were able to get a matching rate compared to your mortgage. So let's say your mortgage is at 4% and you are able to get a 4% first position HELOC or maybe a lower rate. The idea is this income is now going to get directly deposited, right? You can set up payroll to go right into your HELOC and you can set up bill pay right out of the HELOC. It really automates velocity banking. It automates it. Does make it a bit convenient, right? So now you're knocking down, you're creating equity early on. So I'm not going to lie. This has some validity, I would say, some credibility. I would say most of the time, probably doesn't work out. Sometimes, sure it does. I think it has its place. Let's just put it that way. Has its place. Do I teach it like this? Most of the time, no. Because I'm not dealing with this, uh, most of the time, not dealing with a client that is ready for this. They may not have the credit to get a matching rate or lower rate. They may not have the cash flow. They may not have the resources. So it could be a little difficult. But essentially, once you get this HELOC, you start doing velocity banking, you knock it down. And then the whole idea is to start consolidating all the debts into your property and your property becomes your financing tool, essentially. And typically, I think they'll preach, you know, debt free in seven years. I think what these guys think seven years, maybe five to seven, maybe seven to nine, um, you know, and it can work. So that's another variation. If somebody knows of another variation, let me know. Okay. But these are the main ones that I'm familiar with. So we went over how you can do velocity banking. We went over the different ways of doing velocity banking. We went over the players and I forgot another guy. I think his channel is called the Velocity Channel. And, and I would put him up here. He's not, I think Replace Your Mortgage is kind of like their own niche. Um, Mike Adams, myself, Velocity Channel, a couple other guys, VIP Financial, Quack Brothers, more on the real estate, leveraging, flip flop, finesse, make moves, you know, go a little faster. Uh, it requires more knowledge, okay? It requires more discipline. I want to go and I'm going to talk about, okay, let's say you've come to a conclusion. You're like, all right, Denzel, I like it. I want to do it. I want to get results. I want, I, I want to practice velocity banking. Where do I, how, how, who, who can I, who can coach me, right? Who do I hire? Okay, so I want to go over the different options of you know, who you can work with, okay? So the main people, right? We can just call them gurus, experts. These people are typically on YouTube, social media. So it could be a guru expert or they're, they're a guru expert, but they're also a, or they consider themselves a financial coach right, or consultant. So for full transparency, I consider myself a financial consultant. I don't consider myself an expert, don't consider myself a guru, although people will say that. But uh, I, I hold those words a little bit higher. I like to maybe get five years in the tank in terms of experience. In the meantime, I classify financial consultant for the time being. And then I'm working my way towards coaching. All right. So these are the different titles 
and they'll call themselves velocity banking experts, coaches, specialists, right? Here are some of the players that exist. And what I want to do is uh, do some market research for you so you can make a clear, concise observation on who you want to hire based on your four major numbers, what you make per month, expenses, debt, and cash flow, or your no like, and trust. All right, so from what I've seen in the marketplace, from what I've seen, and now that I've been in the marketplace for quite some time, in terms of price, price, all right, let's, let's hit that first. There is the free option, free. People like Mike Adams, myself, the Velocity Channel, Quack Brothers VIP. Some of you could just watch videos, learn the concept, go do it, go get results. I can't tell you how many people, and please let me know if you're one of those people in the chat room, please comment if you're someone that has uh, practiced the Velocity Banking concept by simply watching my videos or some of the players that I mentioned or someone else that I did not mention, let me know if uh, you never paid anyone, but you watched a ton of videos, applied it, got results, and you kind of just, just learned it and you got good at it. Please drop a comment, let me know if that was your route. If so, nice, right? You didn't pay, right? And that's cool, and I, I, I set my channel up for that because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to help everybody in the world, um, and I wanted this information to hit the masses, right? Because I want an alternative to the traditional way of doing things. I wanted to present this in a very ethical, transparent manner, and not make it so tight and exclusive and hard to get to in terms of price. So I made it free. So you have free, okay, that, that's one option. Then you have courses okay courses from what i've seen i've seen courses as low as um i'll, I'll just put mine you know 19.99 monthly um mike adams has a course i think I think it's $147, I might be incorrect. I think that's what he charges for one-on-one -on -one consulting. He's got like a Velocity Banking course, I think it might be $97 for the course. $147, I think that, that's what he charges one-on-one -on -one time for like 45 minutes or, or an hour, if I'm not mistaken. So you got courses where people will put out a course around this and say here's how you do it they'll hand you the spreadsheet they'll hand you some calculators and you're on your way right that might work it's you it's a it's a, a entry level price not too expensive so these courses range from as little as say 19.99 a month and i've seen them as high as uh you know just under a thousand bucks haven't really seen them go much higher than that. If they do go higher than 997, it comes with some one-on-one -on -one support, coaching, consulting, okay? So you have courses that you can buy. Then you can go a level up, call it one-to-one. -one. And I'll see this range as low as 1497, that's what I used to charge, um, to as high as, uh, you know, like high ticket coaching, talking like five grand, maybe eight grand or higher, okay? But typically, if you're gonna pay between 5,000 and up, or even even 3,000, right? Call it, call it 3,000 and up, you wanna make sure it's not just Velocity Banking, that maybe there's some real estate um, courses in there or some other type of, you know, maybe personal credit building and business credit building. Let's, let's throw a little more in there. I want you to be a conscious 
an aware customer. I want you to be very aware of pricing so you don't get, you don't get duped. You know what I mean? Uh, so 3000 and up, if you're going to spend that much money, make sure it's more than just the concept. Because the concept alone, being that I came onto the scene, I've only been on the scene since what early, t you know, uh, summer of 2018 going into 2019. I've personally devalued the cost of getting access to Velocity Banking on purpose so that more people can get exposed to it. So it can be just as popular like a household name like Debt Snowball. That's why Debt Snowball is so popular. It's not as expensive to learn it. Velocity banking, super expensive, right? Uh, I remember personally, I paid three grand to get exposed to velocity banking and that did not come with one-on-one -on -one support. That came with group coaching, group sessions, in person, pre-COVID, group, in person, right? And then it also came with real estate courses. Uh, buy and hold, fix and flip, um, tax liens, um, so many different courses that they would consistently add to. Three grand, velocity banking plus more, right? Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to say there. So if you're going to hire somebody one-to-one, -one, I've seen pricing as low as like a thousand, fifteen hundred, as high as here, you know, five to eight, maybe as high as 10 grand. But again, if you're gonna pay that much, be sure comes more than just a concept. The, the other option is software. Right, software, spreadsheet. So I know of one company so far which I am partnered with. They're called United Financial Freedom. Okay. And they have a software that will automate the velocity banking concept and the debt snowball concept. It'll kind of match the two together. And I want to say the average ticket price, I believe, is like in the neighborhood of 3500 and up. So with, so if you're if somebody is selling you a software, I would ask if that comes with one-on-one -on -one support. Right? I know with United Financial Freedom it does come with one-on-one -on -one support and um, what I did was I I kind of I combined my course with the company so when people enroll they buy a product using my link that they sign up for if they purchase it I throw in my course kind of help them along the way because if you're gonna buy a software to teach you money to show you what to do when to do it right and all that stuff you want it automated you want to make sure that you are very tech savvy, not just a little tech savvy, very tech savvy. I think it's two V's. We're going to go with two. And if I get it wrong, that'll be that. <laughs> not a good speller. But you better be tech savvy because the software is not going to factor in human error. Okay? Because you can make an error by plugging your numbers in. So you don't want it to mess up. That's why you got to be very, you have to be very okay with logging into the software like on a daily basis to really get things going. And then eventually you can automate it. So this is the only one that I know so far. I know there's others. I'm just forgetting the name right now. But there are some other products out there, software, that they're a little more higher ticket because of the technology that goes behind it. 
and maybe they throw in some one-on-one -on -one support, maybe some group coaching, maybe some videos, courses, how to use it, right? A lot of different things. So here are the, uh, 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 in terms of, okay, Denzel, I'm, I'm ready to go all in, right? I'm, I'm ready to move forward. How do I, who do I hire? So you, to, just to recap, you got free from gurus, experts, financial coaches, and consultants. You've got courses that exist as low as $19.99 a month. That's, that's my course. That's as low as it's that I charge. Somewhere around here, $147.97, as high as $9.97. If it goes above $9.97 and it's just a course, in my opinion, I believe that's a little too expensive. I would want it to, to have it come with some one-on-one -on -one support or maybe some group some group coaching, some live sessions, some you know, running numbers and, and answering Q and A's and things like that, right? Anything above a thousand should come with some one-on-one -on -one support, whether it's two, three phone calls, you know, the first six months, a year, you know, and then when you start entering 3K, 5K, 8K up, make sure it's more than just velocity banking. Throw in personal credit repair, business credit building, uh, real estate courses, Airbnb courses, starting a business course, uh, access, networking, group coaching, maybe there's a mastermind, an online community that I can tap into, I can network with people, maybe a throw, throw in a private Facebook group in there so that I can be held accountable on this journey of becoming debt free, okay? So that is important stuff to know. Was that helpful? Did you like that? Please comment, let me know. Was that helpful? Did you like that? That, that really sets the landscape, does it not? For those who are like, all right, well now I'm, I, I know the market research, I know what typically people charge, and now I can you know, have a good understanding. If somebody's charging $1,500 or more, and it's just an online course with no coaching, I don't know if I'm gonna do that, especially if I'm, you know, a single mom, single dad, and um, you know, I got three kids and I'm working a job and this is my only $3,000 I had saved, am I gonna dump that in the hopes of becoming debt free or am I gonna be giving a, a, or am I going to be given a strategic strategy to pay off all my debt, right? So we, we wanna be very aware uh, before you guys make a move. Cause I don't want you guys to get duped, okay? The internet is a scary place, it ain't pretty. Okay? So sometimes you got to have discernment. You got to have awareness.